climate change, heating, crisis, call it what you like, it's a big subject. Big stats, big debates, catastrophic effect on nature and the planet. But how do you write about the climate emergency? Should the writer attempt to be all encompassing, deluging the reader with a flood of terrifying information? It's a challenging brief, whether you're writing fiction or non-fiction. Many of the tropes are familiar from science fiction, an uninhabitable world, a handful of survivors struggling to survive, or perhaps a malign dictatorship of some kind which seized power when the global cataclysm struck. From The Handmaid's Tale to The Road, we've seen and read it all before. The danger is that you end up with yet another dystopian fantasy. You might even say dystopian cliché. What can a writer add? Maybe telling stories is redundant. The pandemic and the rise of populism have added to the sense that fact is more alarming and bizarre than any fiction. The American writer Jenny Ophill deals with this conundrum by going small and operating in the area between fact and fiction. In her 2020 novel Weather, she incorporates killer information about what the world is looking like right now into a cryptic, paired back novel about everyday life in New York City. Sort of. Lizzie, the narrator, is a librarian preoccupied by climate change and the coming apocalypse. But she is also embedded in ordinary, everyday life. Her busy life encompasses school drop-offs, dog walking, a troubled, addicted brother, bills, supermarket flyers, and an extramarital flirtation. But she's working for a former mentor, Sylvia, who hosts a podcast which is a platform for devastating information about what is coming. Her plan is to rewild half the earth, and she has the financial support of tech billionaires who want to de-extinct mammoths. Through Sylvia, Lizzie meets scientists who talk coolly about the last vestiges of society staking camp in the Arctic, where the weather will remain tolerable. Lizzie's job involves answering questions emailed by preppers. What is surveillance capitalism? How can we save the bees? What is the Internet of Things? When will human beings go extinct? Will humans go extinct? Lizzie notes the worrying signs, no frost, increasing numbers of mice, rogue deer. She wonders how far she could carry her child if she had to, and notices that Sylvia's followers are often people who are not Native Americans talking about Native Americans. Ophel's technique is to create a collage effect through small scenes and short paragraphs with nothing fleshed out, a minimum of description. The effect is elliptical and the emotion exists not in passionate exchanges, but in muted conversation and anxious thoughts. The story, small as it is, attempts to grapple with the implications of climate crisis for ordinary people, but it's hard to dramatise. Hence the title, weather might seem like a trivial topic of conversation in the life we have called normal, but in the context of this book, it is the agent of human destruction, though its power to destroy has been enabled by human activity. According to the current trajectory, New York City will begin to experience dramatic, life-altering temperature by 2047, says Lizzie. The world of Ophel's novel is recognisable as our world, making the fragments of factual information all the more alarming.